What is going on everybody? Welcome to week four where we're going to be building out some projects. So I have two projects here, an AWS project and an Azure project, both creating a network. Now if you have only Azure or only AWS, that's perfectly fine, totally not a big deal. You can of course go and sign up for the free trial of Azure, the 30 day subscription thing. Um, I think it gives you like 200 credits or something like that, which will be far than more than enough for this. And then in AWS, if you don't have an account, you can sign up for a uh, free trial. Although just keep in mind that some of the things won't be free. However, when they're done being spun up, you can delete them right away. So like the most you're going to spend is a couple cents. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the code. Actually, before we dive into the code, I just do just want to show two things. Now, number one in Azure, I have this resource group here. Okay. And with this resource group, I'm going to be using it to store my networking configuration. And then in AWS, I have an S3 bucket here called Terraform the hard way. And this is where my TF state is going to be stored. And this is where all my backend data is going to be going. And if I just uh, zoom out here really quick, you're going to see that I have a TF state storage account here. And this storage account is going to store my backend for my code. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with Azure first. Now, the one thing that you're going to notice is this code is going to look very similar to the AWS code and the other code that we've seen because at the end of the day, the code itself isn't really what's changing. It's really the resources that you're working with and the provider. Okay. So I have a Terraform backend here for Azure RM. I'm specifying my resource group, my storage count, my container name, and then the key. So the key is going to be my TF state. And then the required providers, I have Azure RM here. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first resource. So our first resource is going to be an Azure network security group. Okay. We're going to be specifying the name, location, and resource group. The next resource we have here is going to be Azure RM Network DDoS Protection Plan. Now do keep in mind, this can get quite expensive, so please delete this right after you're done creating these resources, okay? Now, one thing that I do want to point out here is we're making references here. So take a look at line 29 and 30. Notice how the location I'm actually saying Azure RM Network Security Group dot Terraform the hard way SG dot location. So why am I doing this? Well, in Terraform, you can reference other resources to pull their values. So for example, what this means right here on line 29 is that I am pulling the value from location in the Azure RM Network Security Group resource. And that value is the variable for location, which we'll take a look at in a second. So same thing here on line 30. For the resource group, I'm pulling the value from the resource group right here on line 24. In Terraform, you're able to reference different values from different resources, which makes it extremely easy to not have to call a bunch of variables throughout your file or to not hard code anything. So next we have the virtual network resource here. Okay. And the one thing that I want to do is point out on line 37 and line 38. Now you notice these brackets here. So these brackets, remember we went over this in week one in Terraform, they are lists. Okay. So as you can see here, I have a list for the address space and I have a list for the DNS server. So why do I need these lists? Well, at the end of the day, the reason why is because address space and DNS servers on line 37 and 38, those parameters, it requires a type of list. So the type must be a list. And the reason why is because typically with addresses and stuff like that, like IP addresses, all that stuff, you're going to ha maybe have multiple. So because if you want to be able to pass in multiple, it must be a list. So regardless if you're passing in one value or three values, it's still a list. And now notice here again, for DDoS protection plan, I'm doing a reference here to the ID from DDoS protection plan here on line 27, that resource. Okay. And then I'm specifying some subnets here to create again, notice on line 55 here that it requires a list to create the subnet for the internal stuff. I'm creating a NIC here 
okay and then finally I'm doing an output so what is an output well an output is any time that you need to either use that value later on or you want to just get the output listed to the terminal so you can see what the value is once it's created you can use the output block here okay so with that let's go ahead and create our resource now this is the first time we're creating a resource throughout this course so this should be a lot of fun here so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to initialize our environment and we're going to bring down our provider so i'm going to type terraform init now if you don't get a successful one and you get an error about a container just ensure that you create that container here the tf state container inside of your storage account okay so next i'm going to run terraform plan and this is going to go through it's going to check the resources make sure there are no bugs make sure there are no code issues make sure there are no syntax issues make sure that the resources are available and then it'll let us know that it's all good and we're ready to create now as you can see here the plan is to add five change zero and destroy zero so now i'm going to run terraform apply okay and then i'm going to type in yes so our resources get created here and we'll go ahead and we'll give this a few minutes and wait for our resources to get created all right and as we can see our resources are being created here again this is probably going to take a few minutes and that's perfectly normal it's creating a bunch of resources so all right and as we can see our resources have been created and if you take a look right here we can see the network id was output and that's going to be the complete id to access our nick okay so what I want to do is I'm going to go over here and here's my resource group for Terraform the hard way. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to refresh. And as you can see, these resources have now been created inside of the resource group. So now the question is, well, we want to <laughs> delete these resources. What do we do? So we can run Terraform destroy and then you could put auto approve. That way you don't get prompted to type in yes. So let's go ahead and run that. And as we can see here, our resources were destroyed. So if I go back here, I just want to show one more thing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in a bit and I'm going to click on my storage account. Then I'm going to go to containers, TF state. And as you can see, we do have our TF state here. We can go ahead and we could even view that if we wanted to. And here's our TF state. Okay. And moving right along here next let's take a look at the aws stuff so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to clear my terminal i'm going to close out Ooh, before i forget i also forgot to show that we had that terraform.tf bars file here and this is how we're passing in our variables of course okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the aws network so for the variables we're just passing an environment variable and then in the tf bars we're passing in the value of staging for our environment variable Okay, so as you can see here, the back end is pretty much the same, except we're using an S3 bucket instead of an Azure storage account. We're using our AWS provider, okay, and then we're creating our resources here. So we're creating AWS VPC, for example, we're creating an internet gateway, we're creating routes, okay, we're using these references like we did prior. Now, the one thing that's different here that I do want to show is that we have a string here for name. And then we have an environment variable or a, just a variable, sorry, it's literally an environment variable, but not in that context. It's a variable that's called environment. And then we have another string here. So when you see this, when you see a string combined with a variable, it's called interpolation, okay? So what you could do is with the bracket and dollar sign, okay? So if it was like literally like this and then you put your variable inside of it, you have interpolation, which means that you can combine a string and a variable. And this comes in handy for things like this. You know, for example, we have a tag and maybe we want the tags for the VPCs to be the same, except we need a way to differentiate it and make it unique. And the best way to do that is by, you know, specifying something like an environment variable. Okay. So scrolling down here, we're creating our security group. And this is really cool. We're creating, you know, ingress ports, egress ports, things like that. And one thing that I do want to point out, probably the last thing here, uh, as I'm just scrolling down here, one thing that I do want to point out is the depends on block. So 
What does the depends on block mean? Well, as I'm sure you know, when you're creating resources, some resources require prerequisites. They need something to be created prior. So for example, you can't create a subnet without a VPC being created because there's no way or where to create that subnet. So what this depends on means is, it means anything in here, ensure that this is created first before this resource is created. So what this is saying is, ensure that the VPC is created before you try to create the subnet. And we can go ahead and we can scroll down here. And that's pretty much the gist. You know, we're creating some elastic IPs, NAT gateways, route tables, things like that. So what I'm gonna do is, because you already saw me create some resources before, why don't you go ahead, create these resources, look through this main.tf, see if you wanna change anything, take some subnets out, add some in, create some new private ones, some new public ones, etc., and really get some hands-on experience here and get the opportunity to play around with this inside of your lab environment. So with that, that's gonna go ahead and wrap up week four. Really do appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week for the last week, week five.